Good news everyone, I'm back today to talk about a, another image manipulation program that you could use. Uh, so this is the GNU Image Manipulation Program, um, commonly referred to by its short abbreviation uh, GIMP. Uh, not the best of names in my personal opinion, very much early 90s computer science humour somewhere. It's not my sort of thing. But what I would say is that it is a very well-established piece of kit. It's free to use. It has a lot of very powerful tools. It's the advantage over Photoshop, of course, is, is the cost and the fact you can just download it and run it. It doesn't need as high a spec of machine as Photoshop to run well. It does also, unlike the browser-based solutions, it's not going to um, refresh the page constantly. You don't need to have a full internet connection all the time. Um, that said, it's not my favorite piece of kit. Um, I don't find this as user friendly as either Photoshop or the browser based solutions, which I much prefer. But for many of you, this may be a, a choice for you. So I'm going to show you how it works, roughly speaking. Um, I'm not great at this piece of kit and there's going to be loads of mistakes in this video as I, as I forget where things are. But hopefully it will give you some ideas and there's loads of tutorials online and YouTube videos that are better than mine that will show you more skills. First, we're going to start with a new image. I'm going to make sure I select millimeters. I've already pre-populated it with the uh, widths and height that I'm going to need. And there it is. Okay, so this is going to be the graphic I'm going to use. I'm going to start by adding some guides. In, the guides in um, GIMP, as far as I'm aware, someone might know better than me, you can either set as um, by dimensions in pixels or by percent. So not particularly useful when I've got a brief here that's asking for them to be in millimetres. You will need to do some maths to try and convert it. Very, very roughly speaking, for a Blu-ray cover, it's about 53% and 47%. Uh, if you were to put something like that in there, it, it's not 100% accurate, but it's, it's probably close enough for a practice project. If you can find out the actual dimensions for your real one, that's gonna be an essential skill. But once I've got it here, then I can do the same as what I would do with uh, the other pieces of the kit. Uh, I can select the various graphics that I want to, to use. I can copy them all, drag, drop them in, and I can import them in much the same way as I've done with all the rest of that. It's asking me if I wanna convert some space. I can't remember what that does. So I'm gonna throw yes. Oh, didn't do anything. Um, so now that it's it here, by default, you have this kind of magic wand tool selected. It's the same sort of uh, thing that you'd have on Photoshop where you want to select backgrounds. Uh, so may not be useful for you. And it's, it's one of the first things that, that, that makes the program more trickier to use. Make sure I've got it selected none. If I want to move, I actually need to select the move tool myself. Um, and from that, I can then start to move various graphics around. It is smart enough though to work out that I'm changing layers each time so I can start to move things around like that. Okay. All your tools are along the side here. So you've got the same um, sort of ones that you had before. So you've got your rectangle selection. Every time I click on something, it brings up options down this side here. Um, there isn't many of these that have like extra additional things. So there's your free select magic wand. Um, Scissors is kind of like a crop tool thing. It's actual crop tool. Uh, alignment lets me move things around. Moving, measurements if I want to work out stuff. Uh, zooming in. It's all the same stuff that's in Photoshop. Um, it's just in a slightly different order and I find it incredibly confusing. Um, so if I want to resize um, in um, Photoshop, that's Control T and in many software it is to transform tool, but here it's Shift S. Um, so I constantly get these sort of things wrong so I can then select an image and then I'm just moving the mouse sideways like this to increase the size of it until I'm happy with it. Um, if I want to move it again then of course I am going to need to start moving uh, by clicking on the move tool and moving that around. Okay so now that I've got the images sort of sized and, and how I want it to be I can I can add these extras if I want to. Um, I'm so scrolled to go with them in the video you may not be able to read them but but take a little look. Uh, every single one of these, you can find much better tools that are going to show you the basics. Um, let's go for something simple stuff. Let's uh, let's try and cut out some graphics. So I'm going to use the uh, the fuzzy select tool, the magic wand tool. Um, and you may have seen me doing that before. For instance, if I wanted to remove certain parts of the background, I can simply click on it and I can press delete just like I did on the uh, other software. Um, Control Z is the undo tool. 
uh, to make that disappear. Um, no selection tool needed now. Uh, I can also reorder my layers by moving them up and down just like I did uh, in my other videos as well. We do have some uh, layer management on the right hand side of the screen so I can create new layers, I can create groups of them, uh, duplicating it is just a button on this one rather than right clicking it and I can also add masks. So masks is one of the things that I used a lot last time around so we'll focus on that today. I can create a mask, I can talk about what sort of things I want to have on that mask, it does give a lot more features. Um, in some ways and it's a lot, a lot more control than Photoshop. Photoshop has a lot of this stuff in the background that you can find but for what we are going to use at school the, the basics in Photoshop are, are perfectly fine whereas here it does require that little bit of extra thought. So creating the layer mask now I can move to a paintbrush tool. I've all got my colors selected if I wanted to change them. Um, but there's a lot of the filters and the colors there as well as the color picker itself that can move around. Um, pressing OK. I can also change the aspects of the brush, which on Photoshop were at the top, but they're all here now. Um, and I can start to just paint away. So this does work very much the same way that Photoshop did. I can undo those paths, I can make the size of the brush bigger, I can make the opacity more or less, I can either select and change the number, or I can increase it, or I can even uh, drag the bar up as well, which is a nice way of getting through this a lot quicker. If I had a selection tool then I can just select out bits of the graphic. I can select the invert. Uh, note that the um, uh, shortcuts are all different of course. Using the paintbrush tool I can then cut things out exactly the same way that I did in Photoshop. So no it's not better or worse, it's just very, very different. And for someone like myself who's, who's used Photoshop a lot, uh, I find this deeply confusing. Um, but if you're just starting out and you don't want to invest in an expensive piece of kit, um, like Photoshop, and you don't have the hardware that's needed to run it, then this is a, this is a perfectly reasonable thing to use. Um, so, now that I've got my, uh, my image cut out, I will, let's move this around a little bit. I'm going to move that, oh, no I'm not. Uh, still got that selection tool on, so let's get rid of that selection tool. Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, I'm still on the mask. Yep, yeah. so there you go. So now I've got rid of the, the selection tool for the mask, I can then, um, Move my graphic around. Still at the bounding box for the entire graphic, so you can't because because the graphic's still there in a mask. Um, that background is still there, so it looks like I'm moving loads of white space. I'm, I'm not I'm moving the rest of the mask as, as well, but I can still stretch and scale the whole thing if I really wanted to, and the graphic will will do all of the the basics. So what do you need to produce for this? Well, to start off with, I would in Make sure you add all your layers into this. You've still got the same advanced tools that you had on your other work. Uh, for instance, if I want to use this added as football and add some adjustment layers, uh, some different filters, they're all still here. Different headings. So I've got here the hue and saturation, which is I think one of the ones I potentially played with last time around. If I click that, I can add uh, filter layers to this. I can change the way that the graphic looks. Um, just the same way that I did, whether or not you'd actually ever want to use this, but some people might. I could change the size of the ball, the, the way the ball looks and all that sort of stuff, and add these filters into the into the layer, okay? Um, and it didn't automatically copy that down across all the other layers as well, which is quite nice, okay? So here's the basics of GIMP. I'm not going to go into much more detail than that because I've already done it the, the video on Photoshop, which you'll see my full run through of how to use that piece of software. Um, if you do need any help and assistance, it's got a very, very good help menu. And because this is an open source software, you're gonna find many people online that have used it. Um, my word of warning though is be very careful about GIMP masks on Google search. It's a dangerous area. Good luck and I'll see you soon.